is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 61010. Welcome back. I am Jim Fannin. Honored to take the mic in the big chair for the next hour and every Sunday noon to 2 on the One Voice for Niagara. 610 CKTB. Thanks for listening. Thanks to David Haskell for coming into the studio with his two beautiful kids. Marin stepping up like a stud. 12 years old. My first kid to take the microphone, no fear, shouting out to her homies out in Great View School. Thanks to David Haskell. Thanks to Michael Wainwright, calling from Toronto. He's back from L.A., Niagara Transplant, out there doing some big things with Roland from Tears for Fears, an old band that's still kicking around. For the next hour, we're going to governance, and we will replay... The whole 610 CKTV roundtable in its entirety right after the show. It's two hours, two to four. Davy Jones is running the board today. Genius board up. Eden Lawson will be back next week. We miss you, Eden, but Davy's just doing a great job today. I haven't done a show like this before. We've been really heavy on interviews and low on calls. Good interviews. Hey, you don't need to call when there's good interviews, so... I've kind of discouraged callers from just having great interviews over in the past. Unlike today, we're going to carry the show. We'll go open phones, 905-688-2582. Do we need a new governance structure in Niagara? This has been batted around for quite a lot. And we've got many opinions. We've got municipal elections coming up next year, 2014. You're hearing people in Toronto and Niagara announcing their candidacy for council or mayor. And so this week, 610 has really just stepped up as far as local programming and bringing you events to highlight issues that we face in Niagara and creating a conversation on it. So 610, again, jumped in, very responsible of them. We had about, uh, I guess, just about 100 people out for, I call it a round table, but actually it's a town hall discussion about governance. It was at Amici's and Thorold. We had panelists. Uh, let's see here. Andrew Sancton is a political science professor from Western University. Go Stangs. Dave Augustine, the mayor of Pelham and also a regional councillor. It sounded to me like he wasn't in favor of too much reform. He's got a good thing going in Pelham. He likes the way they use their creative faculty to solve problems. Not a real big council, though, as well. Another panelist, the third panelist, Wade Stazer. Now, Wade Stazer is the vice president of retail and investment services at Meridian Credit Union. Who certainly had a lot of money to throw around on the naming rights for the new spectator facility. Good on them. It seemed a little bit strange of a non-profit credit union coming up with five large to name the facility. It's starting to act like the Royal Bank a little bit more. The credit union. And Wade Stazer is also board chair of the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce. So we had a real good discussion led by Tom McConnell, who was moderating and hosting was Tim Dennis. A lot of the movers and shakers, a lot of politicians showed up. It was called Governance, Building the Framework for a New Niagara. What? What new Niagara? (laughs) Maybe the cart before the horse a little bit there. We already have a framework, both municipally and regionally, 
at least from a council perspective, I think it was kind of a negative lead almost, building the framework for a new Niagara. What about the framework that exists? What's wrong with it? Do we need a new framework? Do we need a new Niagara? Lots of thoughts on that. So the panelists, Andrew Sankton, Dave Augustine, and Wade Stazer. Jonesy, can you just run me the first clip, and then we'll talk about uh, that right after this. Jonesy. Your question, please, sir. My question is, there is dissension between the councils. There is dissension between the chambers of commerce between Thorold and St. Catharines. city of Thorold has a municipal office right across from the regional office. That seems like an awful lot of duplication. We need change. Can you express the dissension between the chamber and how that's going to part out in terms of you can't get that together? Sure, sure. I will. Uh, I will. I will jump in there. So, but I, I want to give a bit of context. So, so just for um, you know, as we talk about this journey, so St. Catharines and Thorold uh, merged in 2006. What happened in 2011 were a a group of of business people got together and said we need to start building a regional voice for business, and they formed the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce. Uh, at that point, um, and, and after its evolution, um, the St. Catharines Thorold Chamber voted to join. So I know that there's lots of discussion about the GNCC is just the St. Catharines Thorold Chamber. It's actually quite uh, not the case. Actually, it is the case. <laughs> the St. Catharines and Thorold Chamber of Commerce, led by staff member Walter Senzik, not the council, and this we'll talk about a little bit about staff council relationship. Decided it was a good idea to create a new group called the GNCC, the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce, and the idea was, or should have been, to bring all the Niagara chambers under one roof. The problem is none of the other chambers wanted to go with them for whatever reason. A little bit of conflict. I think the St. Catharines Chamber of Commerce actually started going down the Niagara Board of Trade route, as far as a name goes. And then one of the leaders for the other chambers went and trademarked and bought all the websites for Niagara Board of Trade, so that was out. So they held a meeting. I attended it. Bruce Timms and Ann Charette were the only two people that stood up against this. I wasn't for it, because it's not great or anything. It's only just St. Catharines with a different name. And I wasn't about to stand up and put a target on my back with all the big shots in that room. The vote was going to carry. That's obvious. Senzik's pretty politically savvy. He brought it to council. Council ratified it. Brought it to a vote, and it was unanimously approved. And two stand-up citizens in a long time in HR, and Charette, stood up and said, no, no, no. And Tim's the same thing. This isn't the way to go. We don't want this. It went over anyway. Time's going to move fast. It's 114, 115 now in 610 CKTB. Want to join the conversation? 905-688-2582. 610 CKTB. Pound. 610 on the Bell Mobility Network. You text right into the booth. 61010. More governance on the other side. This is 610 CKTV. Ice Dogs Hockey hits here. Cameron Hayden's got a break. Hayden scores! Your Niagara Ice Dogs take on the Generals in Oshawa. Puck drops at 6.05, pregame at 5.30. Down low it goes. Lemon will get it in tight. John scores! Brought to you by Joe Feta's Greek Village, where the food and hospitality of Greece comes to your table. On the official home of the Niagara Ice Dogs, 610 CKTB. 
Ah, oh, my feet are getting soaked out here on this walk. I think you need some new shoes, honey. I think you're right. You should go to Outdoors Oriented. I just got this pair of Merrells there. They have Gore-Tex in them, so they're totally waterproof. The lady that helped me also suggested I try Smart Wool socks. All I can say is that my feet are in heaven right now. Sounds good. I'll head over there. I'll join you. Besides, there's a North Face jacket I had my eye on. <laughs> <laughs> Outdoors Oriented in the West St. Catherine Smart Center off Van Sickle Road. Public health is connected to you in more ways than you think. While your family gathers for dinner, Niagara Region Public Health is there keeping you healthy. They provide a host of services for your family, including community flu shot clinics, safe food preparation information, feeding tips for your picky eaters, parenting support, and dental services for eligible children. Public health is connected to you in more ways than you think. Visit niagararegionca slash health for information on programs and services. is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 61010. Wonderful to meet you. Welcome back. Jim Fannin Show. That was my son, the Hurricane with Ash Booth Schultz from USS. Both of you guys are going to get a check from the Jim Fannin Show today. Davy Jones running the board, making me look good. We're talking governance. This week, 610 stepping up like it has been quite a lot lately taking a big role in the community you know they always got a spot here for community care the Niagara Regional Children's Center and true to form they hosted a governance town hall it was well attended we had lots of questions from the floor I was pleased with some and frustrated by a lot. Here's another clip. I'll let you listen to this. We'll talk about it on the other side. Just some stats for you today. So when we when we merged and, and became um, uh, the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce, we had 1,100 members. We now have 1,450 members, so 31% growth in two years. Uh, and 50% and of the members that have joined us this year are outside of St. Catharines Thorold. We actually have more members now from Thorold than we did when we were St. Catharines Thorold. As, so what I take from that is um, businesses are saying that we want an integrated one voice for business in Niagara, and we continue to reach out and try and build those partnerships. But again, it is tough, and so we're making some, some, some good uh, moment. There's some good momentum there from our perspective, uh, and, and this is a case where, in our view, scale is important. So bigger is better. I think the more businesses that you have at the table, when 80% of those businesses say we want governance reform, we want some, some modernization, that's when gentlemen like to my right here start to have to listen because that's a pretty compelling argument when business in your community, which 30 of them from Pelham, as an example, are in the GNCC. If 80% of them, that's 24 businesses. And I think it makes a, a much more compelling argument. So. It's not easy. There are some folks that don't believe in, in, in one chamber across the region, but we believe that business in Niagara will make that determination, and they are making that determination by joining. I'm confused. Business wants to speak with one voice. If business wanted to speak with one voice, then why aren't they calling their local chamber of commerce in Niagara Falls, Welland, Niagara Lake, Pelham, Welland, Fawn Hill, and saying, we want to merge with the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce. That's not happening. So you've been on a membership roll. So you've been selling memberships like crazy over the last two years. Yeah, a lot of those people are coming from outside of St. Catharines. They also belong to the other Chamber of Commerce. So I don't get it. Momentum? I don't know. Few mistakes with the sales job 
of the St. Catharines Thorold Chamber of Commerce saying, here's what the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce will give you. One, one thing is that, that people think that there's duplication. And I, I have cheat sheets here that I prepared about the different things that we do locally and regionally. And really, I found four major areas that are, I'll say, shared services. The first is roads and bridges. So there's regional roads, there's local roads, and that's similar to sort of the QEW and the Trans-Canada Highway, right? So there's, there's provincial and federal roads. Water and wastewater, where uh, the region does the, pran- the, the plants and the trunk pipes for water and wastewater, whereas the local municipalities do the local distribution. Here's the, the piece that Wade just spoke about, land use, planning, community development, those kind of things. Uh, the bigger areas are done on the regional level and to a certain degree on the local level it's called official plans, so that's for the region and the local level. And then zoning and site plan, that's all done locally in building permits and things like that. And then the final one, and we can certainly talk about this, is economic development. And we've made some changes at the region on that, whereas uh, international and national are sort of supposed to be done by the, the region. I understand Mayor McMullen's in China right now, so local does that as well. And then local regional development is also done locally. Great point. Duplication of services. And I've been asking, I don't have all the answers to this. I've got a lot of questions. First of all, could we take the economic development centers of each municipality, 12 budget line items, and just say, listen, we're going to drop this from your city budget, we're going to move it over to the regional budget, and we're going to let the region do economic development, all with one voice. What, are you going to have a board of directors? In In fact, let's take that, extrapolate it across the board. Could we... I don't know the answer to this, but this is a question. What do we need governance for at the regional level? Do we need governance at the regional level? I assert that we don't. If you want to have the region be a service provider with water, waste, water, trash pickup, policing, uh, economic development, then why can't we just have a regional body that is a service provider and has just a a small board of directors that actually approves budgets. Is that something that we could do? I'm not really sure. But Mayor Dave of, Mayor Dave Augustine of Pelham, you know, brings a couple good examples of things that we are doing that we have mutual interests in. And we get another question from the floor as well. My name is Phil Ritchie and I'm living in the city of Thorold. My question really is for the professor and maybe not getting hung up on the term governance or government or some of the, <clears throat> the, the semantics around the issue, but focusing on the economic realities here in Niagara. We've heard earlier tonight that approximately one and a half billion dollars a year is spent by about 125 people-ish. Um, 120 or so occupying 130 positions, which is about 12 or 13 million dollars a person. I think somewhere in that range, someone can help me with the math. Out of those 130 positions, I understand only three of them are full-time roles. The other 120-odd roles are part-time roles being filled by people in other occupations, other responsibilities, teachers, lawyers, doctors, business people um, who get to a council meeting at 10 after 5 at night and have to work their way through a, a mountain of information or study the weekend before. And without getting too hung up on the big picture, in your view, Professor, has the complexities of being a counselor and dealing in this economic circumstance that we find ourselves now in 2013 with so much happening at the federal, the provincial, now the regional level here in Niagara as well, so much complicated math in terms of transfers and responsibilities and budgets and delivery of services and so many consultants' reports to wade themselves through, is it something that can really be done anymore by a part-time person? And have you seen that role change over the last 20 years or so? Um. probably looked where did he dig up Phil Ritchie? <laughs> I like Phil Ritchie. Phil Ritchie is part of the group that runs downtown Niagara Falls. He was part of the group that went in and bought up a bunch of land and is working to transform a really depressed area of the region, the downtown area of Niagara Falls. Phil, let me help you with the math. And it's, you're obviously a parrot for the Chamber of Commerce. Phil Ritchie, as many know, sat as a board of directors in the St. Catharines 
Thorold Chamber of Commerce. Phil, you're taking a figure, the regional budget of $1.5 billion, and then dividing it by 125 elected officials. And what does that give you? What's that prove? (laughs) It doesn't prove anything other than it's just, it's a great soundbite, except we're not buying it. It's, It's just the math is wrong. You can't take the total budget of the region divided by the, the number of total number of elected officials, including federal, municipal, regional, and then divide it and then come up with twelve million bucks per elected seat. It doesn't mean anything. It's a bad example from the chamber where you you used to sit. And the answer to that, Dave. Thank you very much. I, I just wanted to, you know, I appreciate what uh, Professor Saxon is saying. And want to add to it, I, I have the honor of chairing the region's budget. Um, and of the of that one and a half billion, if that's the right number, essentially a billion dollars is overseen by 31 regional councillors. The rest, Helm's budget is whatever, you know, 13, 14 million dollars a year. So that budget is overseen by seven of us. Uh, and we work collaboratively on that with the community. So I just wanted to kind of correct that. You, you can't do the simple math uh, that you did. I know it was for an example. Uh, a key element here, I think, uh, to keep in mind as well as budget chair is is when we look at our the amount that we pay out of our pocket to the region and to the local municipality of the municipal tax side. So 20% goes to the province roughly, 50% goes to the region, and 30% local in broad sense. But if you just take that municipal section, essentially 70% of your tax bill makes up that billion dollars. The 30% is the local piece, uh, and it's dealing with things that are really, really important to people like recreation, like museums, like culture, like trails, like arenas, etc. Um, so I, I think those are important facts to keep in mind, and it's very, very difficult to sort of generalize because the region is responsible for different elements, and the local municipalities are responsible for other more local elements. Is it just me, or do the questions sound like they're a little derogatory based? I mean, semantics. Phil used that word, semantics. I don't know. You're going to hear some more questions from the floor and the way the panelists actually answered them. It's kind of disturbing. For me, anyways, I liked what uh, Andrew Sancton had to say and uh, Mayor Dave. But the first three people to take the mic were Paul Chapman, a longtime city staffer here in St. Catharines, Phil Ritchie, and Kim Bauer. All connected. They're like These just aren't your everyday John and Mary Smith. I mean, they are from the sense that they're just regular Niagara humans, but connected in the community. Open phones continue. If you want to talk about it, it's a little dry. 905-688-2582-1877-610. CKTV pound 610 on the Bell Mobility Network. Or you can text right into the booth here. 61010. Back on the other side of this break, it's 610 CKTV. Retirement is about enjoying the finer things in life. Golf, travel, plant a garden, it's all about relaxation. Bathfitter agrees, and they work to make your retirement as comfortable and stress-free as possible. The Bathfitter tub-to-shower conversion can be installed in just one day and features a lifetime warranty and an easy-to-clean design. Ask for your free in-home estimate. Visit online at bathfitter.com. Serving Hamilton and Niagara for over 29 years, so you can be sure it's quality and service that lasts. If you're all about getting a great deal on a great ride, you've got to get to the all-out clear-out at your Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram retailer. They're clearing out Canada's best-selling crossover, the 2013 Dodge Journey Canada Value Package for just $19,995. Or step up to the Ultimate Journey Package with DVD and backup camera and get over $3,600 in package savings. All-out value on Dodge Journey now during the all-out clear-out. See your retailer for details today. 
I'm Jack Griffiths with your CKTV satellite weather forecast. A mix of sun and cloud this afternoon with a high around 9. Partly cloudy tonight, low dropping to 4. A mix of sun and cloud tomorrow. Slight chance of showers in the morning. Highs expected to reach 9. Sun and cloud for Tuesday, high of 8. Cloudy on Wednesday with a high around 8 again. Thursday, clouds and showers, high reaching 16. And Friday, pretty much the same thing. Cloudy with showers and windy, a high around 13. I'm Jack Griffiths on News Talk 610. CKTV. Careful. I am your number one fan. You might get him wound up. Hey, here's what you can do while you're waiting for the next Larry Fedora program. You can go to my blog and do what I told you to do there and burn an extra 30,000 calories a year. Pretty cool, huh? Check it out. 610CKTB.com. Transition. Whoosh. Larry Fedora. Do you find this type of fun relaxing? Afternoons on News Talk 610 CKTV. Linda's Farm Theater Projects presents Shirley Valentine, a Willie Russell award-winning one-woman tour de force starring Nora McClellan. Men, they're lovely at first, you know, when they're courting you, you know, before you've had the horizontal party with them. Hysterical and irresistible, Shirley will stay with you long after you leave the theater. On Thursday, it has to be steak. It's the 11th commandment, isn't it? Moses declared it. Playing at the Seneca Queen Theater downtown Niagara Falls, Shirley Valentine runs November 7th through the 24th. For tickets, call 905-374-SHOW. This is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 61010. Jim Fannin. Welcome back. I got a text. How about we replace the round tables on governance with a square playpen on arrogance because it's political arrogance and bureaucratic entitlement, which is at the center of the cancer trying to hold back Niagara. We need term limits to end the lock of the old boys and girls club on our region and get some new blood with new ideas for the mold takes over for good. Any guesses who that came from? <laughs> Andy Petrowski, thank you for listening and for chiming in. The next clip, one of my favorite guys in Niagara, Alex DeGeneres, as I lovingly refer to him. Alex DeGeneres owns Henley Honda, Skyway, fine used cars, Subaru Niagara. He's a transplant from the beaches. He's been here four years and is probably... One of the most enthusiastic, or has been, one of the most positive and enthusiastic guys this region has seen in a long, long time. That was before he took his seat on the board of directors for the GNCC. <laughs> this is his question after he drank the pro, the green Kool-Aid and took the poison pill over at uh, the GNCC. Go ahead. My question to you is, how much of the dysfunction and the lack of unity that exists in the political structure, how much of that do you believe has held us back as a region? You see the leading question there, the negative tone. I mean, Alex, I love you, bro, but don't buy into this, man. This is the best place in the world to live, to work, to raise a family. And we have beautiful parks, safe streets, well-lit neighborhoods. We're close to the the border. We're, you try and look anywhere in the south, southern Ontario, an hour from Toronto, and try and find a brick bungalow a block from the lake for under 200000 bucks or around 200000 bucks, which you can do in St. Catharines. So a little disappointed. It sounds like... The negative scripts coming out of the Chamber of Commerce, and I asked these guys to change this a long time ago, a year and a half ago, called Walter Sensick and said, bro, you know, I used to have a, a pretty good relationship with them. Not sure what. It appears like if you disagree with these guys and you talk, you talk about it publicly, you're dead. <laughs> you get blocked from Facebook. What a bunch of children. I asked Walter a year and a half ago, dude, I said, I want to hear. I want you to hear me without ego. You know, I come with my own ego. Uh, he said all the right things. I thought he heard me without ego. My message was: stop the message that our community is broken. Stop the message that we're falling behind other communities or we're locked in political gridlock. Dude, 
Get positive. You're the leader. Actually, you're not the leader. The leader of the GNCC should be the chair or the president. The media shouldn't be going to the GM, who's a staffer. Change your message. He said he would. And then a couple months later, at the economic uh, roundtable or whatever they did at Niagara Lake, I heard Walter say, no, manufacturing is part of Niagara's economic makeup. I'm like, hooray! But the scripts continue. And the answer to Alex DeGenesis' question. Well, so the outsider? Yeah, a, a quick uh, round at this. First of all, I mean, cohesion is a good thing, right? Especially we all have to respect each other, bring different races, ethnicities, languages, genders, everything together. I mean, co- in that sense, cohesion, we have to have it. But democratic politics, and that's what we're talking democratic governance, which is what we started talking about, is about uh, people have, with different ideas coming together and uh, trying to work them out. So there is always going to be conflict and bickering. You think? Yeah, we've got 12 communities, all with their own agenda. You think when they come to the board table that you're going to get unity? This is what politics is. (laughs) And the thought that governance somehow creates jobs. Government doesn't create jobs. We want to make it easier for business? Absolutely. You want to speak with one voice? Absolutely. But one Niagara? No way. And I know Tom McConnell, the Tom McConnell Show from 9 to 12, Monday to Fridays. We've gone back and forth on this. It sounds like he's supporting the the, uh, double direct, you know, councils, the Burlington model, where you sit at the city level and then you're a full-time job. I got a question. Full-time counselors. Does that mean you can't have another job or own another business if you want to sit as one of those counselors? That's something I don't have a message to. Another quote. There isn't just one person that owns it. So we sit around the regional council table, we scratch our heads, we hear deputations from representatives of the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce, we hear it from other industry, etc. That was Mayor Dave. And I just want you to pay close attention to the, the response by Wade Stazer. No, so my point, so Dave, uh, uh, Mayor Dave Augustine, I should say, respectfully. Um, so, so that's great in theory. So, you know, you're sitting at a regional table saying, you know, scratching your heads, well, what's going to break that logjam? Leadership's a tough business. So who's going to step up and say it's time to change? And that's why we're here tonight. The structures may not be the issue. Leadership is the issue. And, and we need to start moving. Hence the question. Right. Agreed. Who is we? Yeah. Agreed. Notice the clapping in the background. The only applause was for the Chamber of Commerce spokesperson, Wade Stazer. So I'm at home listening to this going, oh, yeah, there's this Chamber stooge just sitting there leading the applause. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Some of these comments, I mean, at some point, I don't know if we're going to have time to get to the clip, but Wade Stazer actually says more than once, it's not the structure that is the problem. It's weak leadership. Well, why is the St. Catharines Chamber of Commerce, sorry, the GNCC making representations to regional council about double direct? And you know that these guys are also the one Niagara guys. So I know we're mixing up politics and issues here a little bit. But the GNCC, and I'm all for the chambers merging, man, but you got to make friends in the business. you got to go not with a fist but with an open hand to these guys and say, here's why, and give them something. If they want to keep their autonomy, you give them a council underneath the GNCC. Uh, my name is Peter Malagudi. Um live in St. Catharines. Grew up in Welland. Grew up in Welland, uh, moved away 30 years ago, moved back about 11 years ago. And uh, Niagara has done very, very well in these last 11 years. Um, the professor indicated that the regional councillors are boards of directors. And I'm stunned by that. I thought they were just our representatives. As representatives, I've talked to all our politicians. MP, MPP, city, regional, and I've asked them, what kind of response do you get from the citizens? And they said, on a major issue, we're thrilled to get 50 people. You guys aren't representing. 
you have to get, I mean, we're talking about double direct. You're comparing us to Halton, York, Durham, Peel. They all straddle the 401. We don't. I've got a, an economic uh, development document here that in the transportation logistics uh, um, page, it talks about, it just says the Welland Canal. We have the Welland Canal. We can't transport. We can't put on cargo. We can't take off cargo. Why put that in here? But um, we've got roads, too. We're disappointed. As citizens, we don't see this as being important at all, governance. You guys should all be fired. Let's get rid of you. We don't need you. We can talk about abolishing the federal Senate. We can talk about abolishing regional government, too. We don't need you. Hell yeah, Peter. <laughs> you should all be fired. Well, I don't know if I go that far, but you remember the day before we had regional council? Not many do, probably. Here's Peter, out of the community for 11 years, outside eyes, coming back going, Hey, this place looks okay. You're doing all right down here. The problem is the business community is chirping the Chamber of Commerce script that it's all broken, it's over-governed, we got too many politicians, we can't get anything done. It's the wrong script. This is the best place in the world, one of them, to live. In a beautiful community, close to Toronto, close to the borders, close to Niagara Falls. Yeah, everyone thinks that their chamber is broken. I mean, the council chambers. Every And you'll hear, if we get a chance to get to Andrew Sankson, point, you're not unique. You're not the only one that thinks there is a better way of doing government, of being elected. For crying out loud, Stephen Harper gets elected with 36% of the popular vote. He's got a majority mandate, and we sit here, bend over, and take it. We don't care about governance. That's pretty obvious. So my opinion is, why are we going to spend two years or 18 months talking about issues like double direct that's going to need a triple majority at regional council to approve, which I think is a real outside chance. So we're going to spend 18 months talking about changing a system that might not even happen. Why? Let's get back to work. I'm Jim Fannin, coming up on 144. I'm a little amped. When we get back, more on governance. It's the last segment. Some of the best quotes are coming up. You want to get in? 905-688-2582. I will take your call. 1-877-610-CKTB. Pound 610 on the Bell Mobility Network. Text straight into the booth, 61010. Do we need a new governance model in Niagara? On the other side of the break, this is the Jim Fannin Show on 610 CKTB. Escape. CKTB, Transat Holidays, and TripCentral.ca are sending you on the perfect vacation. Everybody get up. Win a week at the four and a half star Marcelo Bavaro Beach Prestige Class in Punta Cana. Courtesy of Transat Holidays and TripCentral.ca. The smarter way to plan travel. Play blurred headlines weekdays for your chance to qualify. Details at 610CKTB.com. Auto Value Hyundai is all about the love of the game. And they know not every kid can afford to get on the ice this hockey season. So here's where you can help. Stop in and buy a puck for five bucks. Auto Value Hyundai will match your five bucks, and all proceeds will help kids who want to play hockey get into the game. Auto Value Hyundai. Open seven days a week at Montrose and Thorldstone Road, Niagara Falls. AutoValueHyundai.ca. They treat you like family. 
Protect yourself and your family this flu season. Visit Carlton Heights Pharmacy for your free flu shot today. The free walk-in flu clinics run Monday through Friday, 3 till 5 p.m. No appointment necessary. Simply walk in and provide a valid health card. Or pre-book your flu shot by calling the clinic at 905-937-5000. Protect yourself and your family. Get your free flu shot today at Carlton Heights Pharmacy. Visit Carlton Heights Pharmacy across from the Mandarin in St. Catharines. After a night out with your friends, not having a plan for a safe ride home can leave you in a bad spot. You could end up riding in a police car, an ambulance, or a hearse. These unplanned modes of transportation are costly choices and do not take you home. Your plan for a safe ride could include a taxi, a designated driver, or public transit. I'm Ontario Provincial Police Chief Superintendent Don Bell asking you to choose your ride and always have a plan for a safe ride home. A message from the Ontario Association of Chiefs of Police and Arrive Alive Drive Sober. This is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 610-10. Chinese, Russian, and Japanese, have waiters who stay Jim Fannin, welcome back to Jim Fannin Show, live Sunday, 2 to f- 12 to 2. 2 to 4 today, we got the round table, the replay of the round table. That's a little dry. It's something we got to do. We heard from uh, Mayor Dave, Professor Sancton from London, and Wade Stazer. He's the VP over at Meridian and chair of the board of the GNCC. You, you hear the tone. It's a little it's a little bit derogatory of a tone. You know, this is when these guys next to me on the right need to listen. So the chamber comes before regional council. They come with their report that says we want full-time counselors to sit at both the city municipal level and the region double direct and we want an elected chair council regional council that is here's their report here's their presentation debates it and then votes it down it was given in my understanding I wasn't there by a staffer the GM of the Chamber of Commerce. Again, I don't see how a staffer is spokesperson in my field at the Niagara Association of Realtors, and we did merge. When the media come to us, they come to the chair or the president for spokesperson. They don't go to the CEO. Their staff. Council makes policy. Staff implement it. The problem is here, the tail is wagging the dog, and it happens everywhere. Provincially, municipally, federally, and in all these kind of these little chambers, you have staffers that think they're the chair, that think they're the presidents. You know, I do travel around a bit, and I do um, uh, study what's going on in different municipalities across Ontario and even Canada. And I can assure you that every place thinks that they have the most dysfunctional system of government in the country. And even if it's a single um, um, a municipality. Um, it's why can't uh, uh, our council get its act together and decide something rather than you know postponing things from one meeting to another. And that's in a that's in a situation where where um, uh, you don't have many municipalities. I care. I'm not just out here just to make waves and stir the bottom of the pond up. <laughs> I've reached out to these politicians. Of every stripe. I don't always see the way that they see things. But it appears that sometimes in this community, some leaders, when you don't agree with them, and you're chirping them, and you're talking about them on the radio, you're dead. You're done. (laughs) And then they block you from Facebook and ruin your life. 
what we need to be doing as residents and as businesses within Niagara is making sure that our elected officials hear that message. Because I'm hearing tonight that, you know, they're saying we're not hearing that there are any issues with governance and, and reform. So they come before the chamber, the regional chamber. They bring it. They discuss it. They accept the report. They vote it down. Well, two days later, at a State of the City address, the GM's taking the stage again going, you need to go back to your councils, Mr. Mayor McMullen. You need to take this back and tell them that this is important stuff. No, Walter, it's not. You think it's important. So I'm willing to say right now, Walter, change your tune. Become a cheerleader for business or step down. We don't. We can't afford to have you sowing your poison through this community any longer. Go run for mayor. Go seek a, pol- a political seat somewhere. Do something, man. But put somebody in your job who gets it. This week, the GNCC gave business achievement awards to their own members. If you're going to give out business achievement awards in your community... Don't you think you should look outside your own membership? Here's an idea. You see a business that's doing pretty well. And you're going to nominate them for business of the year or volunteer. I mean, you're just, this is a mutual masturbation party for business. You're just giving your friends awards. We all get it. So if you see a business that's outside of the GNCC that's doing well, why don't you nominate them? Why don't you roll up to them and say, here's a, here's a way you can build some business, get some more memberships. Hey, XYZ Company, Inc., you've been nominated for business of the year. I know you're not a member, but we prefer to have our members, our winners, be members. <laughs> so we're going to nominate you, but hey, it would be cool if you joined. Talk about a soft touch. I don't disagree with with, with any of your perspective, but I mean, actions speak. Um, uh, actually, uh, you know, so I, I gave Mayor Dave here a uh, halls earlier, and you know, the little quotes on the halls that says, you know, don't try harder, do harder. We, we need to do harder in in Niagara, and and the only way we're going to be able to, to retain young talent is to is to create the environment where where they can find jobs and they can sustain. Um, it, I mean. It, it sounds like a big, you know, elephant to eat, but we we have to start taking those steps. There are a lot of great people coming out of both Niagara College and and, and Brock, and and it is a shame that when they're when they're walking out, um, it, it's by engaging and showing that there is a positive change happening. Right now, we're not taking positive steps. No guff, Wade. No, we're not taking positive steps. Do harder. Now, I know Wade's not a politician. He probably doesn't have a political bone in his body. Maybe this is the first board he sat on. I don't know. I'm sure he's a good VP of Meridian. Do harder? <laughs> I know it's a big elephant to eat, but we just got we just got to take the steps. So, <laughs> what the hell is do harder? We're not eating elephants. We engage and show them that we're taking positive steps. Frustrating. Jones, you run the next clip, bro. Jones, eight. Wade. Yeah, I, I mean, just to add to that, I, I think there is a direct link between efficiencies and how we govern, and and business growth, and how we can provide the, those services that that are you know if we put our businesses and our and uh, residents of Niagara at the center, that will help us through drive those efficiencies in service delivery. So there, I, I think there is a real correlation between efficiencies in government, business growth, and service delivery. Wade Stazer says a couple times during the roundtable. So maybe it's not the structure. Maybe it's weak leadership. Oh, man. So what are we sitting here talking about governance for? Unbelievable. It's frustrating. 905-688-2582, cktb pound 610 on the bell, mobility network, text 61010. Get a couple texts. Oh, term limits again. You think we should have term limits? You know, <laughs> I love Steve Cook. <laughs> I wonder how long he's been on the board of directors. 
for the GNCC, the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce. Er, the St. Catharines Chamber of Commerce. Maybe we need term limits there, too. Al Simpson. Nancy Diamond. Long-time members. Great people, I'm sure. Term limits across Niagara, that is. Not just the region. Two terms and you're out, brother, sister. If it takes you longer than that, then you must be after a second paycheck more than serving our community. we got some great people at the region. We'll sit around the table, mayors of this great community, 12 of them. Great people here in St. Catharines sitting around the table. We don't always see the same answer. That's okay. You can disagree publicly. That doesn't mean we have to take our toys out of the sandbox and kick our teddy bear down the hall. My eagles are getting the tar beat out of them. I'm going to hang out in the studio with Davy Jones. <laughs> Watch the rest of this game. I am Jim Fannin. A little amped up today. Sorry to bring such a dry topic to the show, but... It had to be discussed. Coming up next, you can listen to it in its entirety. And I will admit, I did cut and paste. Uh, One of the questions from the floor, the gentleman ran on a little bit. I just clipped out the middle that he ran on. The beginning and the end worked well together. It was the same topic. So it was not my intent to make it look like you said something you didn't or take it out of context. But I spent two days, more than two days, cutting tape in preparation for the show. So I hope you got something out of it. I'm Jim Fannin. We'll see you next week at noon and every Sunday, 12 to 2. This is 610 CKTB. I'm out.